mummified so chicken that we're going to mummify. I need to do like the Egyptians, we need to remove the insides. So I'm going to hold it up and spread the legs. You pull that bag out and stuff out right there. Pull it out. There you go. Now we're going to just. Actually, I'll tell you, let's weigh the chicken now and see how much it weighs. Weigh me first, and then we're going to weigh me holding the chicken. I weighed 76.8 pounds. Now we're going to weigh me with the chicken and see how much I weigh. And then we're going to do a metric to converge, and I'll tell you how much. I weighed 76.8 pounds. Together, the chicken and I weigh 80.6 pounds. That's 3.8 pounds difference. And in kilograms, that is 1.72 kilograms. Here the bird, we're going to dry it. And first we're going to dry the outside, then we're going to dry the inside. And to dry the outside, we're going to cover it with towels and pat it until it sticks. dry the chickens, we are going to cover it in spices and rub it in so it will preserve like the ancient Egyptians did. What type is that? This right here is ground turmeric. We will stuff the bird's cavity with salt. Thank you. 
plastic bags and into a plastic container. Next, we move on to the embalming area. Like any good experiment, we have to set our table so we don't can contaminate anything. So, before, before we start, I'm going to tell you what we are going to do. Because once I have my mask on, I won't be able to talk that well. First, we are going to unwrap the chicken and wash it. And then we will, we will dry it up. And then we will go over and wait, just like we do the other chicken. And when we come back over here, we will inject the chicken with a bombing fluid. And then finally, we will, like salt, but different, we will put the bombing powder inside the chicken. I weigh 77.2 pounds with this equipment. And with the chicken, Okay. 81.0. This chicken weighs 3.8 pounds also, which is 1.72 kilograms. Because of dangerous chemical, I have a license bottle inject the embalming fluid. Soon, he will inject the uh, embalming powder. <coughs> My name is John Anders, um, and I'm one of the funeral director and embalmers here. And I actually oversee this facility, the Cremation Tribute Center. This is where all the body preparation and the cremations are handled. My project is on the differences between modern day embalming techniques and Egyptian modification. Can you explain to us the modern day embalming techniques? Okay. Um, the Egyptians actually did it for a little different reason than we do. They believed that the body, the person needed their body intact to, for the afterlife and years to come. Where today, we primarily preserve and disinfect the body for religious purposes, for people to have services, for family and relatives to have goodbyes. And embalming is considered a temporary process. The Egyptians, the way they did it, was a lot different than the way we do it. We do close the eyes and close the mouth, and the majority of the embalming is done through an incision about an inch and a half long, right above the right clavicle. We raise the common carotid artery and the jugular vein. What we do is we mix up the embalming chemical in these machines, and it's injected into the arterial system. Just like the way the heart pumps the blood all through the body, this pump acts like that and it pumps the embalming chemical all through the arterial system and then the blood is drained out of the venous system. Then we also do evacuate some liquids and other solids through an aspiration method as well. Ancient Egyptians used, uh, removed all the organs except for the heart. Do we still do that today? No, we don't. Um, a lot of people do donate organs and, and bones, etc., and skin, uh, but that is done to help the living. As far as the embalming side, we don't remove anything like that. Everything is still intact. Okay. What benefits does embalming offer families and society? Okay. There's um, <clears throat> a lot of different reasons. If a uh, person has to be transported back to their hometown in another state, the embalming, since it does do a preservation, it allows time frame for the body to be transferred by common carriers and an airplane back to their home state for burial. You have the option to do that because time is on your side then. Also, if somebody visits the person in a hospital or a nursing home and they might have tubes and hoses, etc., still in place, um, when we do the embalming, we, like I said, we close the eyes, close the mouth. We try to create a pleasant expression on the face, which creates what we call a memory picture. And for years down the road, the people will always be able to bring that back, how pleasant the person looked by taking away the ravages of disease, time, uh, weight loss, etc. And we 
we can add a little bit of weight back to the face if someone had a debilitating disease where they were emaciated and add them, make it look like the person did 20 years ago, hopefully, so that the family has a more pleasant picture to remember instead of the one that disease may have caused. Okay. When did modern day embalming begin? Primarily, modern day embalming started back about in the Civil War. Because before that, during wars and, or what have you, if the person was killed on the battlefield or whatever, they would bury them right there on site. Uh, the modern day embalming took over where it was actually performed by doctors, where the person could be transported home. There would not be any decay or decomposition, so the family could have their goodbyes and funeral services and rites. Can you give my classmates and I a brief tour of the embalming room, please? I can sure do that. Um, of course, right here we do have an embalming table. It's a hydraulic table. It can be raised, lowered, head and foot. This is where all the embalming happens. We have head blocks that we'll put down. We mentioned earlier that this is an actual embalming machine. Um, this is a water control unit. It act, we can use this to add water to the table for drainage purposes. Uh, we can fill the machine. When we put the embalming chemical in, we do dilute it with water because it, it is quite astringent. This is some of the instruments that we use. It doesn't have a blade on it, but this is a scalpel. This is an angular forcep, which we actually insert this into the jugular vein for the drainage purposes, because the longer a person has been passed away, uh, depending on if they cool quickly or slowly, blood clots can form. And this is actually used to pull the blood clots out of the vein. We have some um, locking hemostats here and some aneurysm hooks. We actually use this when we're raising the artery in the vein to remove tissue, fascia, etc. So that's just a brief overview of those items. We do have an exhaust system in here uh, for any unpleasant odors or any chemical odors. It will exhaust it. Um, this is what we use for suture. Any incisions that we make, we always have to sew them back closed. So that's what this is used for. Um, sometimes people come in and we're going to, when we set the features, like I said, we close the eyes and the mouth. Uh, sometimes they don't have their dentures or they've lost their dentures if they've been in a nursing home. And that's what this is for. It's called a mouth former. This will take the place of the dentures so that the person doesn't have a sunken expression. Thank you for your time, Mr. Anders. Well, thank you, Josh. Thank you.